today's video, I'm going to be showing you a 3D Minnie Mouse skull. So it's a Halloween Minnie Mouse, so instead of the orange or pink, I went with a really, or instead of the red or pink, I went with a really bright orange, and it's got the polka dots, and it's got bows, and all of those Minnie Mouse elements that you think of, but then instead of having the Minnie Mouse face, there is a cute skull, and then it's also got some like drippy, oozy orange goo coming from the top of some of the other accent nails. So I hope you guys love this one as much as I do. I actually think my favorite element is the sparkly little Mickey Mouse head inside of the spider web on the ring finger. I love that one. It's just a subtle little spooky element to it. So I hope you guys love this design as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye. We are going to begin with a layer of dip base and then dip it into a neon orange dipping powder, tap that off, apply another layer of dip base. So this is the double dip dipping system and I'll put all the color names in the description box below. Dip that again, tap it off, and then we're going to do a generous coat of the activator. So after that activator has been applied and set for about a minute, then you can buff the nail with a buffer black. I do all of them at once. So I don't really have to just wait for that minute. So now on the thumb, we're going to be sculpting our Minnie Mouse skull with white acrylic. So the actual skull, I wouldn't say is extra Minnie Mouse. Like you could just sculpt this skull and not make it a Minnie Mouse. One thing that I did that made it cuter so it would lend itself towards Minnie Mouse is I kept the eyes more circular instead of having them have kind of like their brow tipped up or went more realistic and had the middle of like towards towards the nose kind of tipped up. There's diff a couple different shapes of the eye cavities that you can do so that or the eye sockets that you can do so that they look either creepier or more realistic but if you want to be cute keep them rather circular. And then I'm not going to do the lower jaw of this skull. I'm just going to keep it with the upper teeth and then leave it at that. Like I said, we're kind of trying to keep it a little bit cuter because obviously this is a Minnie Mouse design. So even though it's a skull and it's Halloween, there's still glitter and bows and polka dots and all of that great Minnie Mouse, Minnie Mouse stuff. So we have the rest of the skull done. I'm just going to kind of smooth things out, really not overdoing the detail on this skull, trying to keep it, like I said before, cute and simple. All of the other stuff, all the details will be painted in later as far as filling in the eyes black, same with the nose. We're just gonna try to kind of work in the basics here and just use white acrylic. One thing I like about sculpting with white acrylic is that it's really easy to work with. White's one of those basic colors that a lot of companies will get right because it's one that, you know, if it, you know, back in the era of pink and whites when they were all the rage, you had to have a really workable, really controllable white acrylic and that, you know, that technology that they created to have the right pigment to acrylic powder ratio hasn't gone away. So a white acrylic, if you are going to sculpt something new or try something out, it's one that just typically tends to be easier to manipulate. So we're going to be after the last thing we're going to do with our white acrylic is sculpt the little teethies on the bottom of the skull. I did not leave them or sculpt them in before because I want to do individual teeth. So we're just going to do that really quick with that white acrylic, filling them in from side to side. If there's anything else at this point you want to add to your skull, obviously go ahead and do that. But if you are happy with it, we're going to make our little Minnie Mouse ears with two circles of black acrylic on a nail form backing. So try to keep in mind how big you made each bead so that after you do the first one and you go through to pick up another bead to sculpt the other ear, you get it about the same size. One thing I like to do is really pay attention to how much monomer I put in my brush and how much time I dip into my black powder. So have sort of a regimen you follow. And then as long as you, you know, stick to your, to your tempo, then you know that your beads will be somewhat close or quite close to the same size. After they have set up, you can glue those black circles on to your nail, just like the skull was Minnie Mouse's face, kind of put them at the, like the 10 and two positions, almost like, you know, if you're driving a car. So we're just going to glue those around the cranium of the skull, hold them in place till that glue grabs. And then once that's done, you may want to flip them over to the back and stick a little bit of clear acrylic underneath so that those ears are not going anywhere. Once that's done, we're going to detail our face with some black acrylic paint. I'm going to be adding the Minnie Mouse hairline, so it's almost like a heart shape. And then going down, just sort of the little cut in above her smile, I'm going to do so it rests right on top of the cheekbones. And then paint in that area all the way around. That's the area that's going to end up glittery, so if you miss a spot or the paint is, you know, maybe not as pigmented as you may want it, that's okay because it's going to get covered up with black glitter anyways. So just get kind of a base idea down of what you want for that area. You're also going to want to fill in her nasal cavity and her eye sockets with black paint. Don't worry about it being super, super realistic. Again, very cute. So for the 
the nasal cavity usually I don't necessarily make them perfectly even make them a little creepier this time I'm pretty much making it a standard heart filling in the eyes if you want to take this whole mini mouse vibe one step further you can give your eye socket some eyelashes i went back and forth on whether or not i wanted to do that because while i think it does add to the mini mouse feel and make it just a little bit cuter it also your eyelashes aren't attached to your eye socket and the the realistic person in me had a little bit of a hard time doing that so we're going to go through do a little bits of outlines here if you want to do some highlighting with white paint you certainly can do that as well especially on the teeth just to kind of brighten those up a little bit i think that helps but also around the cheekbones around the eye sockets those areas you can do i did eventually give in and add the eyelashes as well once you are happy with that we're going to apply a layer of gel sealer over the background so over all of that nice bright orange and then you can put that into your lamp to fully cure make sure that there is no stickiness left if you are using a top coat that has an inhibition layer that you need to cleanse cleanse it very very well apply a layer of matte top coat over the skull let that dry completely and then apply another layer of your gel top coat over the ears and over that area around her face that i said we were going to make glittery so that's the point of her hairline down around the side and just right above those cheekbones so that area of Minnie Mouse's face that is like the back of her head when you're looking at her in the front all of that we're going to make glittery because we want this nail while Halloweeny and while cutesy and Minnie Mouse there's no reason not to make it a glitter bomb too before you cure this we're going to sprinkle the wet gel with a fine black glitter I would recommend choosing a black glitter that is really really fine very um not like bigger chunky or like a mix so that it fits in those nice little skinny hairline areas really really well and doesn't disrupt the lines once you're done with that you can brush off the uh, the extra glitter after it's been cured and now in a nail form backing we can sculpt a little 3d neon orange bow and this is the same color as the background if you wanted to switch it up a purple or a green would be lovely but then after you have the petal shape done and it's starting to cure, you can fold it in half and then just sort of bend the bow a little bit. You can leave it perfectly, perfectly folded in half with the line, the, the air going all the way through. So it's just a loop. I personally think they look a little bit cuter if it's almost like the ribbon is flopping over on itself slightly. So after you fold it, just kind of, you know, mess around with the shape of the, of the bow. Put the two halves together, add a touch of acrylic right to the middle so that they don't separate when you go to add the middle piece, and then sculpt a skinny little strip of that same orange acrylic next to it. Let that cure just enough where you can pick it up. Once it has reached that point, you know, for my 3D acrylic monomer, it's maybe 30 seconds at a maximum. But once you kind of reach the point where you can slide your brush underneath it, pick it up and wrap it around the center of your bow. Once that is done and it's all been cured, then you can glue that to your lamp right above the area. So right between the ears, right above the face. And then using some black acrylic paint again, we're going to be doing some details on our, on our little bow. So the one thing, like I said, if you wanted to switch it up and do a different color, that would help the bow show up and you may not want to do any painting on it. If you do make the bow the exact same color as the background, which keeps with a monochromatic look to this, which is why I went with it then you do have to add some black outlines, something to the bow so that it stands out. So I outlined just the very edges of the ribbon and then I went back through and I added some polka dots. As long as you do something like that, it, it shows up from the background. It isn't glossy like the background is going to be matte and all of that stuff makes it so that you don't really have to worry about it disappearing into the background. It still looks like it's a bow. You can see it. Um, so once you're finished painting it, you do need to apply a layer of matte top coat. So that's going to protect your acrylic paint. Do a very light, careful layer, trying not to get any matte top coat on your background or on your glitter. Now on the ring nail, we're going to do a simple spider web across the tip, almost as if it were a French tip. So envision the smile line and then end the lines of your web, these first lines of your web, right where they would kiss that smile line. And then take and do the little interlocking or, you know, the connecting, the connecting lines of your web. So we're going to swipe those up and try to keep your web symmetrical from side to side so that if you're looking at it down the middle, all the lines to the left of the middle line, all the lines to the right of the middle line are about even. Obviously you're a human. It's not going to be, you know, flawless and that's fine. Nobody's going to, you know, come and say anything and nobody else will notice it, but you probably. The thing is, is just the more, the more symmetrical it can be, 
the more it just kind of lends itself to that Disney cutesy perfection that's out there. And so normally with spider webs, I try to say not to be symmetrical. Don't try to be too perfect because it looks more natural, but there's really very little that's natural looking about Disney. So if you wanted to have a Disney vibe, try to keep it as precise as possible. And then using a dotting tool, we're going to add just a little tiny Mickey Mouse head silhouette inside the web. Once all of that's done, we can apply a layer of gel top coat over our webby nail and cure. Now we're going to sculpt a 3D bow with black acrylic this time, again on a nail form backing. This one is going to be slightly larger than the first one we sculpted with the orange, so just bear that in mind as you're picking up your beads on how big to make them. So make it that nice, pretty petal shape after it has begun to cure fold it in half just like before point to point and then again just kind of mess with it a little bit so that it has just a little different than a perfectly straight shape. I don't want them to be a triangle. I like my bows to have almost like a paper airplane type shape if that makes sense if you look at just the silhouette. So we're going to do this yet again. Repeat for the second half of your bow. Press the sides in. Slide your brush underneath pick it up, fold it in half. If you have any questions about making 3D bows, I have a class, a live class dedicated to making them. It's completely free. If you've missed any of my live classes in the past, they're all fantastic and I highly recommend checking them out. But I do have one that is specific to 3D bows that go through things in live uh, it's on its live class in real time. Everything is done. I go through so many tips and tricks for making them and I can include a link to that in the description box below if you missed it or if you're curious and want to watch it again. So after we've got the two sides of the bow set next to each other, add another little strip of the same color, the black acrylic to the middle, slide your brush underneath, pick it up, wrap it around the center. Voila. Once that is done, you can very gently buff the top coat in the middle of the upper side, upper area of the nail. Put some nail glue right in that scratched up spot. Set your bow down, hold it there until the glue grabs, which probably will not take all of that long. Once that is done, you probably wanna secure that with some clear acrylic, but then take and apply gel top coat just to the very center of the bow, not to, not to the sides of the bow or anything else, but just to that middle strip. And then apply that gel top coat to your little Mickey Mouse head as well. Once you have top coated those two spots, then you're going to sprinkle black glitter over the top of them and cure. Now on the index, middle and pinky nails, we're going to apply a coat of dip base. Dip it into that. It's um, called Black Like My Heart is the color from Double Dip. Apply another coat of dip base, dip again, and then the activator. Buff the nail just like you did the first one, just to make sure it is nice and smooth. Sometimes dipping powder has a slightly granular feel, and if you just buff it gently, that goes away and it smooths out perfectly. Apply a layer of matte gel top coat, and now using a large dotting tool and some white gel paint, we're going to be adding a polka dotty pattern over the top of all of these black nails. So when you're doing your polka dotty pattern, take your time and re-dip your dotting tool frequently so you have the same amount of gel on it each time you make a polka dot. If you don't and you do one dip and and then try to do two, three, four polka dots. They're all going to be different sizes. After you have done, you're done with the polka dots, before you cure, sprinkle it with a fine white glitter, cure and brush off the extra. And now going back to the same neon orange we've been using all along, we're going to be sculpting little drips coming down from the cuticle. If you're wondering why I didn't make my polka dots all the way up, it's because I knew they were gonna be covered up anyway, so it really would have been an unnecessary bit of time. So we're just going to make these orange drips as you're going through and you're doing, because this is a design that's placed on multiple nails, try to make your polka dots, or not your polka dots, try to make your drips slightly different from each nail so it doesn't look like it's the same pattern on repeat. The drips then look a little bit more natural and like it really is some kind of goo oozing down the nail, which is the goal here. Then apply some gel top coat over the drips to make sure that those are nice and shiny and wet and gooey looking. Once that is done, this whole design is complete. I can't get enough of this one. This one just is so amazing. I love it so much. I love that it has a skull and it's kind of creepy, but it's still overly cute and it's glittery and there's bows and I just love every element. I hope you guys are as excited about it as I clearly am. If you are curious about any of my past, I do have some past Disney Halloween videos. I can put them in the description box below and I will see you next time. Bye.